Good day. This is Brad Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. That means that I continue to dig for the proper foundation of the kingdom of God, for the prodigal son and daughter. There's a saying from Rosa Parks. She was the lady that refused to give her seat as a black person in a bus. This is many, many, many years ago. I believe that it was in the early 50s. That means I was born in 1950. That made me 70 years of age. So somewhere between 60 and 70 years ago. She said, and I quote, I have learned over the years that when one's mind is made up, this diminishes fear. Knowing what must be done does away with fear. Folks, in other words, if you know what you're doing, you are no longer scared. I hope that this will help you to open your mind, open your eyes, and to open your ears. And maybe I'm talking about your spiritual ears, not just what you hear, but what you understand with your eyesight, your spiritual eyesight. Let's pay some attention to some of the following. I love this one. We can transfer our broken and busted and disgusted life. Some people are so fed up with where they're at and they just want to reformat their life. Now, this is a good beginning because this is possible. You can change your life. If you're busted and disgusted and broke and don't make sense anymore out of what is going on, every single day bombarded with all kinds of frustration and this is for you my friend see some of us have the understanding that when you read something from the past it does not always make sense now how come we all have a talent an ability a capability we are able to do something. Some people are very good in drawing. Other people are speaking. Some of them are singing. Look at the YouTube channels, you know, unbelievable. TikTok, whatever you can find. People are gifted in some areas. Or listen to the voice. Little kids, 10 years of age, 12 years of age is a voice. Unbelievable. That's called a talent. Now, it is also a talent of one's personal spiritual DNA. We have talents, folks, and our spiritual DNA means that a DNA is a chemical string that is in ourselves, in our body, in our system, that individually determines who we are. In other words, you are different from your brother or your sister or your friend. We are all individuals. This is extremely important to understand. We are individuals and we have a personal spiritual DNA for God created us this way. Now I spoke about the difference between the chosen ones. Are the Jews the chosen inhabitants of Jerusalem, of Israel? And they are not the chosen ones. See, the difference is that the people that are the chosen ones are the ones that are doing the will of God. So there's a confrontation with a long ignored reality, and that is called the DNA, our spiritual DNA, what makes us set aside or be apart from your neighbor, from your friend, from your mom, from your dad, from your brother or your sister. We all know that DNA is an asset in the chromosomes in the center of the cells of living things unique to each individual. No one is alike, and it makes everyone unique in itself. Now, there's a parable. A parable is a story of the call to the wedding banquet. In other words, you get an invitation to come to a wedding. Now, some people don't understand the invitation. Party time! 
If you yell that on Facebook or on any social media, people will come there. Because party time is, you can let go. Well, before we go any further, we will deal with the question, what is a parable? A parable is a brief educational narrative in writing style or poetry that shows one or more useful instructions or values. So before you go to the party, there are some instructions. Folks, use them. There's nothing wrong with listening for a moment. Even if you're so high as a kite, I don't care. Pay attention. The gospel parables present worldwide actualities, valuables to the life of every person. And among them, a moral tale, one of the essential teachings important in the life of everyone, whether you're a man, woman, or a child, is the call to the wedding banquet. So understand, you have an invitation, whatever color, whatever personality, whatever individual you are, whether you're man, male, or female, or you are a child, it does not matter. You are invited. Now, we also have to understand that the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. In other words, the Father invited you. He loves you. I'm still working on it, to loving my neighbor as myself, because I found that a lot of things I didn't like in myself. But in the eye of the beholder, God Almighty, we are adorable. We are his child his creation, he loves you. So when I say he loves you, you are invited. And it doesn't matter if you call yourself a Christian or if you are a Jew or a Muslim or an atheist for that matter, a Hindu or a Buddhist, every person from every walk of life is welcome. Welcome, welcome my friend. You that think that nobody cares, you are welcome. And if we all understood this and we set aside all the baloney about who believes what and we exercise the separation between all faith would not be healed if we don't come to the wedding. In other words, this wedding invitation will cause us all to be one instead of being divided but each restored to their original core spiritual condition before being corrupted by humanity it is sad folks but we have all been corrupted doesn't matter what kind of belief we are but there is a wedding invitation and that will put us all together one with the father if we respond See, right now, there is a tremendous drive for peace, peace, peace. There's a desire peace on earth that can only come when we can understand the parable of the call across the spectrum of humanity. When we understand it, we must understand and we must recognize the legend of the call as an organic fact of life. Also, the central principle of all religious and all of men's undertakings. In other words, if you are Mr. Trump or if you are Mr. Xi or if you're anything in between, you're nothing. We all have the same objective. Seek the purpose and his true destiny in life. They are presented in this call. Matthew 6, verse 33 says, in the complete Jewish Bible, it states so beautiful, but seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, his righteousness, not yours, not your convictions, or whatever moves you, his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Not to understand how the legend of the call relates to one's own life is to dwell in hopelessness, in hopeless ignorance of the very purpose and objective of the life you are living. Let me repeat that. You goofed up. You're wandering in the desert of life and you don't know where you're going. 
respond to this call because that will change your life and it will no longer leave you ignorant it will no longer leave you desperate it will no longer leave you broke you are invited to pick up the call for the father we are like a prodigal son and daughter and we are victims of a spiritual amnesia and if you're like one and you understand that you have been suffering from spiritual amnesia you've been wandering blindly in this far country without remembering when you dwelt in the kingdom of God of your heavenly father you are dwelling in what Jesua portrayed as the outer darkness my friends you see when I was in my 20s I had a yearning I wanted to watch I wanted to travel I wanted to see and so many of us are like that when you're young and I traveled around the world and I made sure I saw and experimented and saw so many different nations all over the world and I've had the, the opportunity to travel several times around the world but I tell you one thing folks it is outer darkness there outer darkness that is what Jesua Hamasia said when our afflictions of spiritual amnesia our loss of memory are restored that means although this world is beautiful we are inherent to something that we don't realize we all suffer from an organic blindness that can be healed when we in take that invitation we are the originals we not I but we can be the disciples that were condemned and some of the original disciples were condemned by Jews and by Gentiles because they were Essenes the Ebionite Nazarenes they had nothing in common with Judaism or pagan based Christianity folks I'm talking to the body of Christ and it hurts me so much the more I come to the understanding that we have been violated in our trust some people say we've been screwed and yes my friend I was lost for a very long time in the lost and found department and maybe you find yourself there at the moment but it is no longer necessary the peace of God is there when you accept that call to the wedding invitation accept that wedding invitation and then you will see that seek you first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and I tell you you will find that peace there's a great truth in a parable and remember the call to the wedding invitation to wedding banquet it's for you you that feels lonely you that is sick you that is dealing with the coronavirus you that's dealing with a pandemic and therefore you lost your job or your income or you that is going down under the stress of all the negative news broadcast folks it is for all of us God loves us so much and I tell you one thing we gotta get that restoration restorative justice that is the beauty of Jesua HaMashiach he was the way the truth and the light and if he showed the light he showed the way how to reconcile with God Almighty I will soon see you there we have and we are entitled to pick up that invitation and go back to the Father for he is our Lord he is our life when we restore again the relationship between God Almighty and ourselves. God bless you. And remember, tough times never last, but tough people do. See you there soon.